most of us know about the ISI or KGB or even the CIA. They've become folklore because of uh, popular media and of course uh, Western cinema. But how many of us know about MSS and MPS? That's the subject of this episode of Simply Nitin this week. I'm Nitin Gokhale. So, what are MSS and MPS? They are the foremost Chinese intelligence and security agencies. MSS is Ministry for State Security and MPS is the Ministry for Public Security. They watch the entire country, that is China, and its citizens, not just within China but also outside. They are a surveillance state, they are the strong arm of the Chinese Communist Party. Every citizen is under watch because of MSS and MPS. If you want to know more about MSS and MPS, do visit a paper online done by India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval in 2013, barely a year before he became the National Security Advisor in 2014. He talks about this entire structure in this paper called Chinese intelligence from a party outfit to cyber warriors in the paper that he did for Vivekananda International Foundation of which he was the founding director before becoming the NSA. It gives complete details of how the Chinese operate and how the Chinese state keeps a watch on all its citizens. Rest of course I am going to talk to you about in this episode. Now MSS was formed in the early 70s. It is an all-pervasive ministry come intelligence agency that keeps a watch on every Chinese citizen. They are in fact called the custodians of ideological security of the state of China. As all of you know, the state of China is actually equivalent to the Communist Party, the Chinese Communist Party. In fact, some people have referred to the Chinese Communist Party as the new dynasty that rules China. And they do not want any interference or any slippage as far as security is concerned. And therefore, MSS has a almost equivalent or sometimes a larger budget than even the defense forces. Last known figures that are available publicly show that the internal security budget of China is nearly 175 billion dollars, almost equivalent to its defense budget. By comparison, what are the figures in India? Well, 2019, India's internal security budget was about 13 billion dollars. The defense budget, including pensions and pay, is about 65 billion dollars. You can imagine the gulf of difference between the kind of money that goes into keeping China entirely under surveillance and the total population, which is over 1.3 billion. Now, what do MSS and MPS do? They have every Chinese citizen registered on their websites and their database. The uh, internet is completely policed and censored by the uh, Chinese censors under the MSS. The uh, internet system, uh, all of us use Google or uh, we use Firefox or we used to uh, run Internet Explorer. But all these are banned in China. What does China use? It uses Weibo and they don't even have WhatsApp. They have something called WeChat. If you are registering your uh, account on WeChat, it is automatically registered with the MSS. And the MSS keeps a watch on what you speak, what you uh, transmit on uh, the WeChat or what are you surfing on Weibo. So there are no Facebook is available, no Twitter is available, none of the uh, platforms that we take for granted in India are available in China. Now the MSS is also uh, given the task of spying on its own citizens. In the sense, uh, especially in Tibet and uh, Xinjiang, where uh, uh, the provinces are seen as restive provinces of China, where there is uh, simmering discontent. The budget of uh, the MSS branch of Xinjiang and Tibet are the largest 
as far as uh, the provinces are concerned in China. They not only uh, keep a watch on uh, dissenters, they uh, also uh, make sure that no religious activity uh, goes beyond permissible limits in Tibet. And in Xinjiang, of course, all of you have read that there are concentration camps or re-education camps as they call them, run by the MSS. The MPS, on the other hand, uh, is interested with the, what we call law and order duties. So the, uh, the police that you see on the streets, uh, the paramilitary forces, they all come under the MPS. And the MSS, uh, in collaboration with the MPS, makes sure that no Chinese citizen is out of the surveillance network, which is extensive, wide and all pervasive. Therefore, this is the internal uh, situation as far as China is concerned. But there are other uh, tasks that the MSS does. It also encompasses military intelligence. And military intelligence is interested not just with tactical intelligence of different army strengths or naval strengths, but also to steal technology. You all know how China is known to reverse engineer many of the defense and uh, space technologies stolen from uh, Europe and America. And all this falls under the purview of the MSS. They recruit not just uh, Chinese people or Chinese um, uh, citizens, but also recruit uh, American citizens of Chinese origin, maybe even American citizens, white Americans. There are several examples you will find if you Google uh, spy networks of China in US or in Europe. Now, China over the past 40 years has been given a free pass by the West where the Americans uh, actually thought that if they uh, allow China to join different international forums, uh, allow China to join the international systems, auto automatically democracy will follow. Instead, the uh, tight control of the Communist Party over its citizens has only increased. Uh, but in the bargain, the West has lost out in terms of manufacturing, in terms of economy, and China has now grown uh, manifold from uh, 1972 when President Richard Nixon went out and opened the world to China uh, in that historical uh, tour he did with Henry Kissinger. Now the MSS and MPS uh, have had some activities uh, in India of course, uh, the latest being in early August this year, you would have uh, seen reports of a Chinese national running a thousand crore worth of uh, Hawala racket and also trying to spy on the Dalai Lama and his followers in Dharamshala. Now this man, uh, Charlie Peng, who was caught in Delhi, uh, was uh, arrested incredibly in uh, 2018 for spying and uh, he was expelled from India. But he managed to come back uh, as a, as a, some different, uh, under some different nationality, under a different passport and married a young girl from a northeastern state and uh, got away with it for the next two years until he was caught by income tax department, not police, not counterintelligence, by, but by the income tax department for the Hawala racket that he was running. So the penetration of the MSS spies, uh, not just in uh, the West uh, or in um, the other parts of Southeast Asia, but also in India uh, is, a, is a matter of concern because uh, they the entire system is geared towards protecting the Chinese Communist Party. All companies, manufacturing companies, technology companies like Huawei are mandated to share their uh, technology, their secrets and also uh, give uh, some employment to these spies uh, onto their uh, company headquarters or company branches that they open all over the world. It's a very well-oiled machinery and uh, something that the world had shut its eyes to uh, for the last 40 years. It's only now that uh, everybody is waking up to the all-pervasive presence of the Chinese spies, uh, Chinese academics, Chinese think tanks who also uh, act as eyes and ears of uh, the Chinese Communist Party, uh, which is uh, ruling China. So therefore, uh, we must read more about the MSS the MPS, the Chinese uh, structure, the Chinese way of uh, luring people with uh, money, with um, other inducements, think tanks, media, academics, 
all get lured into it and especially in the past 20 years this has been a trend not just uh, in the west but also in india if you see many think tanks big think tanks in the us uh, having a separate china study program that is because the chinese communist party has gone about it very systematically to win over friends and influence them and of course all of you know how the pushback has now begun in places like australia and uh, parts of america but the penetration is far deeper than uh, anyone can really imagine right now. So I thought I'll just give you a bit of uh, the uh, history and the way uh, the Chinese Communist Party and its intelligence networks operate uh, across the globe. Uh, but this is not something that has uh, happened overnight. The Chinese in its own strategic culture give a lot of importance to what, what they call knowledge dominance. If you uh, read ancient Chinese texts, or even look at what happened in the uh, early 20th century in France or in Europe. Uh, even under uh, the uh, KMT regime, before the communists took over, uh, the Chinese had a very well-oiled machinery of spies and informers. In fact, uh, I'll end by uh, directing you towards an episode that happened in Hong Kong in uh, 1953, when uh, Air India plane that was chartered by the Chinese Communist Party to transport its um, Prime Minister Chao Enlai to the uh, Afro-Asia conference at Bandung uh, was blown up mid-air, uh, just short of uh, Indonesia. And uh, that was uh, part of a conspiracy by uh, what then used to be called uh, Formosa or now Taiwan. Uh, the Taiwanese spies who had broken away of course from uh, mainland China uh, had penetrated into uh, the Hong Kong uh, police and the Hong Kong uh, technical area where the Air India plane was parked. A bomb was planted there. So the counterintelligence of the Chinese Communist Party got to know of the plot and they prevented Chow and Lai from flying onto that plane. And rest of course is history. If you want to read more about it, go and read my book on RN Kao, the founder of Research and Analysis Wing. India's Foreign Intelligence Agency. The book was released in 2019 and it's available uh, all over the bookstores and of course on Amazon. So the Chinese intelligence uh, is something uh, that has been traditionally been part of China's statecraft and therefore uh, we need to study it more as I mentioned or maybe even uh, understand how they function. That's all I have in this episode but uh, we will come back with uh, more such interesting anecdotes or facts. But uh, until then, keep uh, watching us on YouTube and uh, like us on our social media handles. And of course, keep sending the feedback as you usually do. Until the next time, it's goodbye.